Morning, Joe. Morning, morning Chris. How are you? Oh, well, uh, smiling and happy and ready and raring to go. <laughs> are you lying? <laughs> I will leave that for dear listeners in work out. <laughs> oh, Chris, I can hardly see your ceiling. What's happened to your laptop? <laughs> What's happened to my laptop? What, you mean after the comments on, on RevChat a couple of weeks ago where Harry said, Chris, I don't want to see your ceiling. <laughs> What's wrong with your ceiling? What's There's something wrong with my ceiling. Yeah. I can still I'm, see it. I can it's still fair. see it, but only the corner sing, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to be truthful. If you're going to be that's truthful. Cool. Yes. So, yeah. So I, I've raised my laptop up by the height of one of my big Bible commentaries. Fantastic. I knew they'd come um, in useful someday. So just as Harry said, I think my camera is now at eye line. See, just in case he thinks us clergy never listen to him. Oh. Well, do you ever actually, to Harry, Joe? Do I ever listen to him? Of course, because he's my husband and I obey him and I am always submissive to his wealth of information and glorious leading. I'm tempted to say I that. almost oh, got you, through that. Are you lying now? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely rubbish, complete nonsense. <laughs> yeah, moving on. <laughs> We're missing David this morning. We are, and I can't actually remember where he is. That's really bad. It's a funeral visit, wasn't it? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Can't remember, though, but there was a definite clash. There was a definite clash. Anyway, he will be doing whatever he's doing, and we are doing this, so that's all good. Yeah. And then I think he will be charging to the square for the two-minute silence at 11. Because, dear viewer, we're recording this on the 11th of the 11th. Uh, my poppy was rescued. Uh, thankfully, it was a. I wore it to church yesterday afternoon because I had the reception class from Bull Windsor came to bring a wreath up to church. That was very lovely. Um, but I wore my poppy, and then by the evening it had gone. So apparently, my son found it by the bins this morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> slightly damp, but you know, still going. So we're okay. I'm not sure where mine is. I think it's out in the car from when it fell off when I took my coat off. So they do fall off, don't they? I, what I want is a sparkly one, like they wear on Strictly. And then I could do a one-off purchase, and then each year I could pop a pound in the box or something, and then I can still wear my... Because, you know, single-use plastic, it's not so good, is it? Anyway, no, but remembering is, remembering is good. Remembering is very good. Yes, absolutely. I'm not, not, it's not about the wearing of the poppy. It's just whether I might be able to wear a more substantial one that I'd lose less. <laughs> <laughs> and actually we'll wear more as a result so. well i bought one of those once and it was one of these little metal clip-on ones oh yeah 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 with, with, with the back and you think oh good the these, are, they, these last but of course they've got the year emblazoned on them printed on them yes because you want so then you've got the year. next year well i don't want to waste it do i wear it but then you don't want to be a fraud in wearing one from the previous it's out of date because it might look like you're a cheapskate and you didn't bother putting your money in yeah. Well, there you go. There's all the poppy problems. Yeah. <laughs> poppy conundrums for this poppy week. Conundrums. Here's a question for you, dear go viewer. On. Oh, for dear viewer, uh, go on. Or dear viewer or dear Joe. <laughs> Actually, it might be even dear Joe because of her gin church, or even all dear viewers who go to gin church. One of the companies that supported the Royal British Legion have produced a bottle of remembrance gin a bottle of grenade gin where you pull it says pull the pin to have a drink oh well i'm not sure about that um it was part of the uh, royal british legion but i think they might have um realized that it's not the best of ideas you can have a discussion on your gin church as to whether that is a good idea or not i think it was one of those apparently it was created by ex marines servicemen yeah okay servicemen in some way or other, as a way to remember those who have died in, under grenade fire and things. But the marketing of it looking like a grenade. <laughs> yeah. Less good, to my mind. Hmm. I like, I mean, I like the concept of raising a glass in memory of people. And if yes. that's a glass of gin that's made specifically to benefit those who perhaps were in service and that's a good thing i just yeah i think the taste slightly tasteless marketing possibly but then i imagine if you served in the military you probably have a sense of humor about these things that possibly feel 
uncomfortable to those of us who haven't. Maybe, I don't know. Do you think we will like, take our pause and get into our Bible reading? Before yeah, we I think we're getting a tangle here, so let's have a pause. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're going to read the Beatitudes, which, as you point out, it's not the reading set for remembrance, but uh, is certainly the, rem- the, the reading that often is read at remembrance. So this is um, the Beatitudes from Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, <clears throat> he went up the mountains and after up the, up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Mm, Challenging stuff. Challenging stuff. Yeah. I would just say, isn't it? How many times is the word blessed there in all those readings? Yeah. And it's funny how I always read, I always have been taught to read it blessed, but really it's blessed. We haven't got that <laughs> accent on the E, have we? we no, it's not. It should be blessed. It's blessed. interesting that concept of blessing. It is. Who wants You're... to be blessed? Hmm. What does it mean to be blessed? What does it, yeah. I mean, we take it as something positive. Mm. Um, we all want good things. We all uh. want to feel we're there. And people say, oh, bless. <laughs> they do, when they're being slightly patronising. <laughs> or, or we say things like, well, she's blessed with good bone structure. Or uh, they're blessed with a beautiful singing voice. So something that is, you know, is a gift to you, but isn't something necessarily... That you are responsible that you, for. Yeah, that you created yourself. Yeah. Strangely enough, I've never had those two said to me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's what I was hoping for. Um, I think it's about God's affirmation, isn't it? Yeah, we want, God, we want God to give us good things. Hmm. Yes, because we we bless we bless people at the end of our church services, don't we? And we say, "The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you." Yeah, and I and remain with you. With you. Now be among always. you hmm. always. And I always tend to make that the last thing I do in a service. Yes. Just so that people leave with that blessing. <laughs> so that people leave. <laughs> Sorry, leave with the <laughs> blessing. <laughs> please leave. <laughs> of course it's not please leave, it's please have a cup of coffee. <laughs> please stay. Please but stay. yes, that, that's what you take away with but you. The takeaway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, and, and I do, and I think it's one of those things that we regard as really important. Mm. You know, yeah. we will want to be. Blessed by God. Absolutely. I actually did my school assemblies on this this week. Did you? How did you tackle it with young people? Well, I it was I did it all about keys. Because I've got lots of keys and I've got lots of really big church keys. Oh, I bet you have really yeah. substantial keys. <laughs> Some really substantial keys and keys come in all different shapes and sizes. Yeah. We even went into electronic keys. Oh. 
and, good. you know, modern keys. Hmm? And then it was, well, how do the keys link to these Beatitudes? So, of course, Google had to come into it, or SPCK Google School Assemblies. And they were the ones who put the link in with all the keys. Mm. And then they rewrite it. It said, you know, where it says something like, blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called the children of God. If you rephrase it to the key to being called children of God is being a peacemaker. Yeah. Which is probably why this reading's been chosen for remembrance. Absolutely. You know, because yes. the one thing we remember is how horrible war is. Yeah. And those who stop war are those children of God. Yeah. And it, it's it's a kind of, it's interesting, I've heard them talk about the Beatitudes, about whether they're a manifesto, you know, it's what, what the kingdom of God should be like, or whether they're values. And I'm not sure I agree particularly with either of those ideas, but the sense is that the people who who show these attributes now are closer to the kingdom, are living the kingdom way more than those of us who show attributes that are sort of opposite. Because if you think, you know, if you're poor in spirit, if you're mourning, if you're meek, if you feel you're under pressure and low in the sort of hierarchy of things, the affirmation, the, the blessing is that you, in God's kingdom, that will be raised up. Whereas in the earthly kingdom that we live in now, they're not, they're not valued. You know, they're tram people are trampled on for those things. So it, I guess it's about, it's about hope, isn't it, that something will change. But it's also about giving us ways of unlocking the kingdom now. Because we talk about the kingdom being revealed now, don't we? We, we have this hope that God's kingdom will be fully enacted in the second coming of Christ, but that we live in this kingdom moment now, that there are glimpses of God's kingdom. So, yeah, being a peacemaker is enacting God's kingdom now, is revealing God's kingdom at work in the world. Yeah, I mean, I always think that the, the phrase there is, always, is it Corinthians, isn't it? It's the now and the not yet. Yes, it is. The oh, eschatological yeah. tension oh. between the now and the not yet. <laughs> oh, 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 you've been rehearsing those big words. <laughs> it's about the only big word I ever use. Yes. <laughs> I, when I it talked about this in a sermon a couple of weeks ago, you know, we live post-resurrection. So we know that Jesus is not dead, that he is alive and is reigning with his father and has given us the gift of his holy spirit so we've already had that promise enacted to us which for those who came before jesus in the bible never realized never knew never experienced so we have that now in our life but there's more to come there's more to come mm. Mm. and then it also affects a lot of the way we need to be living you know uh, we need to work for peace and i must admit i think the working for peace at the moment feels like we need to be working as hard as ever for peace. Absolutely. Um, there seems to be more war and distrust and conflict around all over the world than well, I've, I've ever known in my lifetime, because you know, I've not really known much war. No. Um, it's always felt remote to me. Um, my brother's godfather was in the Navy and went to the Falklands War. And I remember that when I was quite young then, but I do remember it being, you know, relative, we were connected to it because we knew him and we thought about him and we were praying for him. And I remember the Christmas card coming from the Falklands and being very intrigued about how far away it had come and things like that. But that, I think, was my first recollection as a child of being connected to something but that was taking place halfway across the world and and again I remember as a teenager I think Bosnia was the first time again a really big recollection in my life as a teen of, of this conflict happening again not local to us but in a place that felt and looked very recognizable I remember being very shocked by the pictures in Sarajevo and I, I'm thinking this looks like a city I would recognise or a, an environment I'm familiar with. And there's conflict on the streets in a way that I couldn't really believe could happen. And I remember that being very profound at the time. 
thinking, why do we always assume that conflict happens remote and far away from us? Because actually, you know, it could be much more close at hand and, and you know, neighbour against neighbour, which it was in Bosnia, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I was at, was it two years ago, I think, I was in Montenegro and then we went over to Croatia. And again, like you say, there were still buildings that were derelict that had been lived in only, what, 20 years earlier from conflicts and war. And it does bring a bit more of reality to it. And but I also think it's close to home, closer to home now because we seem to be involved in it ourselves. Mm. And it's right into our homes in social media because it's so easy to start conflict and to accuse somebody of being wrong and to insult somebody. You know, when you hear of our MPs and all the death threats they get for holding a view mm. of A or B, we don't seem to allow people to disagree. Mm. We think, oh, they've got to be killed. They've got, we've got, you know, I'm going to... Yeah. And we can't get away from our social media, or it can be hard. Mm. You know, it comes straight in our phones, which we seem to keep with us all day, every day, mm. at all times. You know, it's almost the first thing we do when we wake up and the last thing we put down before we go to bed. Mm. And we can't get away from this aggression. And if we do something to put our head above a parapet and say, I think you're wrong, it opens up all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, and, and being, you know, to be a peacemaker doesn't mean you have to agree with people, but you have to seek a way to move forward to bring peace and security. And if you are pure in heart, I'm looking back at the Beatitudes, you know, that that hopefully stops you <laughs> posting nastiness on social media. And if you are, and, and also remembering that the last Beatitude is such a challenging one, you know, blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a blessing, does it, when you're, you're being slated or you're being attacked? Um, but it's that kind of presence of God in the midst of all of this. Um, but it's a tough, it's not easy, is it? To, to no. see to be peacemakers in our lives is a challenge. Yeah, yeah, and it's probably something that you and I probably experience as much as anybody else when they utter all kinds of things falsely against you on my account, says Jesus. Because mm. that's all we ever do. You know, and it's the good part of our job is we're here to talk about Jesus all day, yeah. every day. Yeah, absolutely. And to bring Jesus into all sorts of situations and circumstances. Yeah. And sometimes people don't like it. No. Um, but we're there to bring that news. Yeah. And I, and I guess that has to encourage us and those of us who feel that they have a calling to do that mm. is to be encouraged by it. And because sometimes it can be discouraging, can't you? you think, well, I, I, perhaps I won't talk about Jesus or I won't talk about Jesus's love or I won't talk about our commitment to be peacemakers or I won't talk about our um, absolute uh, need to be telling the truth or I won't call out bad behaviour or I won't pursue justice because actually I get loads of flack or yeah. I get a bad time and it's horrible, I don't like it, and it'd be easier just not to do it. But sadly, <laughs> it's finding that courage. It's finding the courage to be resilient enough to say, no, this is what we're called to do. And I find a lot of people, they don't know how to talk to their neighbour because they're worried that they will be persecuted, reviled, and we've all got to respect other people's personal choices which of course we do course. and peacemaking is by respecting other people's personal choices but I think I might have said it a couple of weeks ago in, in church actually if people don't understand Christianity they can't make a good choice if they haven't been informed you can't make a good choice you know if people don't see Christians that are helping people mourn or comforting those who mourn. If people don't see Christians who are hungry and thirsting for righteousness, if people don't see Christians that are giving mercy to people, if people don't see Christians that are peacemakers, yeah. it's not a good advert for what we do. No way. 
And so perhaps those values, those Beatitudes need to be, you know, our goals, don't they? Well, they do. I mean, but it's incredibly hard because we're human beings. Of course. And but as that human beings, trying. And we've just got to be seen to be trying. Well, and to be humble and, and, and to be, you know, prepared to say when we get it wrong and apologise when we hurt people and, you know, just be better at owning the struggle. <laughs> I don't know. I think sometimes we're just not honest enough about how hard it is and how difficult it is. And and when we get things wrong, we need to be much more frank about it and say, oh, I, I got that wrong, I did that, I wrong, that wrong, I said that wrong thing, and I'm sorry, and that wasn't the right thing. And, yeah. you know, and let, can we move on and will you forgive me? And, you know, rather than building these kind of, like, silos of, well, you know, rah, and it just, you know. Oh, or like I had yesterday, it was... Well, I don't. I, I I would never go to church because it's full of hypocrites and people who aren't interested and and they've done X, Y, and Z. I know. I um, had a very similar conversation yesterday as well. You know, and say they're very common. Mm. And why can't we be poor in spirit? Why can't we be merciful? Why can't we be thirsting for being right with God? Yeah. Amen. Oh, man, and I'm thinking that. Of, well, I know I'm not very good at it yet. <laughs> After 40 years of trying. <laughs> but that's why I bring it all back to remembrance, is if we had nailed peace, there would be no need to remember yeah. because we'd have got it all right. And we know that that's not true. So calling ourselves back to the repentance for war and the seeking for peace every year is a good thing. And calling ourselves back to that sense of this is how we live for God is a good thing. Because we know we can't get it right every time, but we just keep coming back to the basics and thinking, well, how can I do better this time? How can I do better? Yeah. And I suppose it's why, well, it is why it's not supposing, you know, very early on in every church service we ever do is a confession. Absolutely. We come to church. We're sorry for we got we got it wrong. And then we can say, well, actually, we've confessed correctly. So, yeah, we're forgiven and we start again. Um, I always remember this was probably 30 years ago. It was a management training course when I was engineering. And right, the first thing the guy says, he goes, he goes, I love it when somebody comes to tell me and says they've done something wrong. Because it means they're doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Because the only people who never get anything wrong are the people who don't do anything at all. Really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we teach our kids, isn't it? You know, you, you've got to try. You've got to try. If it goes wrong, it doesn't matter. We'll pick it up and we'll start again. But if you never try they, anything... Is that they say at primary know. school, there are no mistakes, just learning opportunities. Absolutely. And why don't we say that to ourselves now? Yeah. What have we <laughs> got to learn about it? Absolutely. We can yeah. we learn from this? Yeah. Chris, it's been a pleasure, as always. As always, as always. <laughs> you can follow us, uh, well, you know where we are because you're here already. <laughs> you can follow <laughs> us on social media um, for the benefits of Eggers and Colmers or Everett's Dairy team. And it's lovely to see you. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Bye, to, to the viewer. Bye. Bye.